Spark me in the back another one. Yo, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. We got a great one for y'all today. Listen, Safari, yes, Safari, and Erica Mena. This beef has gotten crazy because not only have we gotten a lot of truth, we also gotten some video proof of things that are really going on. Let's basically get straight into it because we have Safari basically opening up this dialogue or this storyline because this basically is like a breakdown or like a storyline. And I have to somewhat understand what's going on because this stuff happened so rapidly. We're going to get straight into it. He basically talked about Erica Mena, right? The crazy Erica Mena basically sending his body parts to basically his mother and his sister. Ain't that insane? Let's get straight into it. This woman texts a naked picture of me to my mother and my sister because she wanted to let them know that, oh, you, you and your, your son, I'm pretty sure your son's not telling you what's really going on between us and all of this other nonsense. Okay. Me and you are still, you know, having a relationship and that's over with. Thank God that's over with. Like, you know, I, I prayed about that and, and, and there's absolutely nothing physical going on anymore. And you taking naked pictures and sending it to my mother and my sister to do what and prove what? My mother and my sister are the most least problematic people on earth. My mother's not one of those mothers She's not like a TV mother who's here acting rah rah and doing a bunch of ignorant nonsense. Like my mother is so calm and zen and anyone who knows my mother and my sister and what they do, like my sister and my mom, they are in the holistic field. They're very, everything about them is zen, herbs, teas, spiritual. And you're sending naked pictures of me to my mother and my sister. For what? And it's like, that's the type of nonsense I have to deal with. I cannot ever pick up my kids in peace. Everything is just long and drawn out. And it's just so unfair that when a woman says something, no matter what, it's like, oh, it's the man's fault. People are like, but you, you, you didn't know. And I'm kind of like, you know what? Well, I, I thought I could make somebody not be just like as angry. But then when things just started like going sour and not working out, it just became just, it's just not even realistic to deal with. Right. And that's basically what he said about that situation. And that's just really just the tip of the iceberg of basically what's really going on. Because clearly Erica Mena has maybe some mental illness going on because that's just a tactic or a move that just the natural average person does not do in any breakup situation you know the worst people are doing is just burning up cars and burning clothes but to just contact the mother and the sister therefore you have no respect for your ex-mother-in-law or once mother-in-law and sister-in-law like you literally show that you don't respect other people's that so why would why would we respect you if you literally showing that you don't respect your own mother-in-law ex-mother-in-law like they did nothing to you they're literally what he's saying is they're innocent in the situation they're bystanders and now they have to be in an uncomfortable situation and be put in between this domestic situation that's just ended up being step situation to where now it's getting so so aggressive that now it's you're actually fighting putting your your hands on him uh put, putting your children in jeopardy because now they're actually having to see this stuff over and over again and that creates that abuse becomes an abuser and a lot of times people who abuse people kind of either grew up in that situation or seen this situation a lot and felt like it was either okay mama and daddy did it or uncle and auntie did it so now i'm gonna go up and do it and she literally is setting a bad example just doing it specifically in front of children like there's already the place where like you do it privately where it's disrespectful too in, in that situation but to just add more oomph and then on top of that now we're the public in the world is being able to see it that's humiliating for the children when they grow up they have to see themselves in this situation some of the most traumatic situations is when parents are fighting especially at an early age these are things that you really witness and you really feel like it's very impactful because you just feel like this is the worst emotion that both of your parents have shown you you know what i'm saying and a lot of that stuff can linger on in your life and it can either make you outburst in situations and relationships with different people just based off of what you saw as a child that's called childhood trauma you know what i'm saying basic of psychology you guys gotta understand the situation is very deep but now she went online and talked about how safari it doesn't even matter with him because I didn't choose him. Apparently, in her words, she just pretended like 
it, like like the love or whatever they had, the children, it didn't matter. I really don't like people like that in relationships. You already chose the guy. You already married the guy. You went through all the situation. Now you're saying, oh, well, before you tried to hit me up, I didn't even look your way and you had to work extra hard. I mean, that's what a man is supposed to kind of do. If you are playing hard to get, the man should try his best to try and impress you or try to speak to you or try to get to you in, in, in a very polite way. And that's what he did. But she just wants to lowball him. Let's basically get into what she said. So in my mentions this morning, I've come across a few comments stating, I don't feel sorry for her. She chose him. I chose him? Do y'all forget? I was chased for three years. And I wasn't budging. Like, mofo had to go through my friends and my family just to get me to reply in a text. Let alone give him any type of chance. The chance was given and life took its course. Before you knew it, he was popping the question. And because this person went so hard, it was like hard not to believe. So I absolutely have to speak on this whole you gave him a second baby thing. After me having Sapphire, but we were still married and we were still going through that roller coaster of trying to fix our marriage. So with that process comes makeup sex a lot. Anywho, um, I went for my yearly checkup with Dr. Jackie and boy can she vouch for this. Anywho, she asked me if I wanted to know the good news or the bad news and of course I wanted the good news and that's when she broke it to me. You're pregnant and you're months and months and months pregnant no way I just had my period boy did she put that monitor on my stomach and legend was there full face hand I still have the video he was grown so to clarify me hiding pregnancy when I found out a week later he found out so basically if you look at the situation between Erica Mena she is to me one of those people who when they're getting cheated on uh, they stay with the person and then feel like whatever they do to them, it's okay. So being aggressive or fighting or putting their hands on them. Oh, well, you cheated on me and you basically wanted to stay so I could do whatever I want. I could do whatever I want, I could do whatever I want. Like that's her mindset in the situation because that's the, the, that's the type of energy I get from her. You know what I'm saying? Like if someone cheated on you and someone disrespected you, you should separate yourself immediately. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't look back and try to find better. You will find better because you're not with someone who is not loyal to you. You know what I'm saying? So why stay there and put yourself in more of a heartbreak situation, especially if you can't handle the fact that he did that, right? So now you're super duper aggressive, right? For no, well, for a reason, but you haven't healed from it. So now it's become nasty and it's grown up and beside you and you just try to make your marriage work and all this makeup sex stuff. All You make your whole stuff with him very sexual and not about love. And that's how you can tell the situation where she basically sent his picture to his mother and his sister. That's how you could tell the type of brain you're dealing with when it comes to this type of specific person because i don't want to see me even say woman because there's not a lot of women out there like this but there are a good amount that are out there like this you know what i'm saying and she's setting a good example for the people who are witnessing this and maybe they could possibly change their their ways or see that oh wow this is really toxic you know what i'm saying but the whole there's a lot of this huge community that sits there and try to ignore the situation because oh it has nothing to do with them right or oh they, they don't like her or, or they don't like him or whatever the hell they always are on the funny parts of the situation oh she was on a ladder or something comedic about it bro this is not funny you know what i'm saying there's children there's childhood trauma going on right in front of our eyes there's domestic trauma violence or whatever you want to call it going on right for our eyes and all we do is always turn and look the other way when it's a woman doing it to a man it's funny but when there's a man doing it to a woman, it's not funny. It's very serious. Diddy, Cassie situation. So if you got this woman putting her hands on this giant dude, compared to her, she's he's a very giant dude compared to her. If he do anything, it's malice. It's extreme. But you got her doing this. Let's get straight into what she was doing with him.
I don't even I don't even know where to start. I'm dealing with someone who is just whose anger management is just non-existent. When I, when you have children with somebody who at the end of the day it, it shouldn't even have happened because I should have just noticed certain things when it came to parenting. You know, when you, you're with someone for three years and they have a child and you probably saw the child three to four times because the child was put off to go live with somebody else. And, you know, you don't, you kind of, look past it when you don't have kids or you're not thinking about that. I never even like was like, yo, why doesn't your son live here? And then when you finally get to have a conversation with the son and find out why, it's, it's crazy. You know, imagine speaking to a child who's of age and knows what's going on. He's 16 years old. And he says, if I ever had to live with my mother, I would kill myself. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make that up, you know? And it's, it, it, it sucks that I gotta like, really just run this down because of this smear campaign and somebody who gets such a high on just talking about me and picking and choosing what kids you want to, you know. And the two of you who are just like in a weird space and everything is a fight, especially in front of the kids. Like, I'm not gonna subject myself to that my kids have never, ever seen me upset. My kids have never heard me yell. You are dead. You're 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 dead. you I don't argue. That's just not in me. I was going to get a restraining order because, you know, she's doing stuff like showing up in my crib five o'clock in the morning, pulling out a ladder, hopping the fence. Oh, my God. What is that? Oh, my God. What is that? And that's basically that situation where you see clearly she's deranged. Like that's I, like, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist and I can't sit there and just label people with different, uh, you know, mental illnesses or whatever the hell. Right. But she clearly has a, a bipolar, like she has a disorder. She, she has a disorder that's clearly uh, something that evokes a lot of anger. Now, when you look at her career, you look at her life, I believe she was with a lot of quote unquote stars or like with a lot of people in the industry. And one thing I noticed about people who were kind of, to me, passed around in the industry, they, they grow very violent. Either they hide it and they do it in private or they do it loud all the time because of the succubus's energy or the soul ties. And most of the time, the soul ties are with demonic men who are unhealed. So they're with multiple partners and those, it's just millions and millions of different soul ties just off of 15, 20 people that you probably been with in the industry that probably been with thousands of other people just in the, as a collective. So now you have all that always building up in there. You can clearly tell that she's she's sick because when you look at the fact that her son doesn't even want to live with her and the fact that the son would rather off himself at 16 years old than to live with her 
should tell you a lot about the situation because a lot of times people don't like to listen to children, but sometimes children are the best people to listen to because there's no reason for them to lie or feel like, uh, or really just lie. You know what I'm saying? Because they're going to be honest a hundred percent. And especially when it becomes to people's parents, you can learn a lot about a person. When you look at their parents, you look at Diddy, you look at his mother and his father, you know what I'm saying? You can, you can see the traces of, okay, this person created a monster because they have traits or have done monstrous things. So now when you look at Erica Mena, the reason why the person in the video even said that your children is going to end up like you, the reason why they use that as an insult is because the abuse becomes the abuser. She has them in the back of the car, driving recklessly, not even looking behind her, see if traffic is coming or anything, driving recklessly, t lowering down their window while speaking and also lowering down her window, meaning that the children now also is being exposed to what's being cursed at. And on top of the fact that she's right next to them cursing really loud. And then nine times out of 10, when she rolled up that window and drove away, she was by either cursing on the phone with her girlfriend or cursing to the children about the situation, talking out loud. That's the type of energy that I get from Erica Mena. And I feel like it's so nasty. Like, and the thing is, this video has nothing to do with like women you know people like to always put like oh anti this anti that this has nothing to do with just women this has a lot more to do with mental health right because these traits come into uh, come a lot more in men right when it's a lot of anger outbursts and hitting on their partners and stuff like that but a lot of times it does come from a lot of women too you know what i'm saying and that's what we have to be fair we have to hold people accountable because i hold safari accountable for cheating right now the woman should hold uh erica mena accountable for just being domestically angry and just putting i guess it's domestic violence because she puts her hands basically on him pushing his face slapping him all this other stuff in front of the child it was so much of a disgrace and so much of a problem right that someone as big as Nicki minaj spoke out and Nicki minaj said this I don't know who needed to hear this, but good for you. <laughs> good for you. You see, sometimes you need to leave people them alone. And you see, sometimes when a queen is minding her business, y'all think said them why you understand getting another queen can boo. Gal think say they want the queen life. <laughs> I don't know who needed to hear this, but good for you. Now, I'm not really sure if the situation with Nicki Minaj when she's saying this is immediate to more Safari or Erica Mena. I think it's a leaning a lot more towards Erica Mena just based off of the rumors or the allegations that I've heard that she was laughing at. Uh, Erica Mena was laughing at Safari for either going through a horrible situation with trying to change his life and trying to basically get over Nicki Minaj. He was at his lowest self. You know what I'm saying? And it was his darkest moments when he was trying to get over because basically Nicki Minaj doesn't just come with herself. She comes with a giant fan base and that fan base can be extremely anti based off of whoever they don't like or whoever Nicki Minaj don't like. Now we did see Safari partying at Nicki Minaj concert rapping word for word right and i also feel like Nicki minaj best lyrical time in her career was when safari was dating her or with with was with her working with music music with her right so let's basically get into what safari basically said about this situation with Nicki minaj and how dark it was for him to basically get over her right because you know it's Nicki minaj out of all people you know what i'm saying he got her tatted everywhere so when you think about that situation he was basically the biggest bar and he basically had to force himself to get over someone that you just basically gave your whole life to. You know what I'm saying? So let's basically get into it. You say your biggest struggle or obstacle you ever had to overcome. Like, I'm not even going to sugarcoat shit. Like, 
I was with Nikki. We broke up. So her fans and certain people, they just wanted it to be like, okay, they're not together no more. F him. Let him be nothing. Let him disintegrate. Let him disappear. Whatever. But nine, ten years later, yeah, 10, 10, 15 TV shows later, a lot of music out later, doors up later, cribs like, I'm still here. And, you know, some people don't like that. They're like, damn, why are you still paying attention to this? When me and Nikki first broke up and she got with Meek and they were like the biggest in the world and we was all beefing and shit. You got to think about it. I had two of the biggest people in the world like against me. So that made everybody be against Now think about this. Think about Safari's plight, right? We will label that a plight. With all of that hate that was probably casted towards him and, you know, negativity that was cast toward him, wouldn't you think in most situations, especially when you're dealing with Hollywood men or people who are of celebrities, wouldn't you think they'd become very bitter or they'd become very negative and then you'll start hearing outburst situations and angry outbursts? Notice you haven't really heard no safari outburst or negativity in terms of him being violent or physically violent. You know, you really kind of see him always being a goofball or the, the joke or the clown or whatever the hell or something creative or doing something creative he's always something that's not of pure negativity and evilness uh you know that's all i'm saying attached to his name erica mena did call a black woman a monkey though i do remember that on some tv show right so now when you understand that situation with safari and you understand erica mena now you have two polar opposites in terms of e emotional intelligence or just emotions period you see what i'm saying he literally went through the worst scrutiny that could have ever went through that anybody could ever went through not only do you have Nicki Minaj fans hating on you now you have Meek Mill fans hating on you you could have been a very evil person right after that it could have been the villa arc could have been created right then and there but it wasn't so basically let's end this out on basically safari explaining the whole entire situation the aftermath of basically after he uploaded the video how he just wants peace. I believe he cried in this video. I'm not sure, but the dude shows a good enough emotion to where you know that he's honest with who he is as a person. And a lot of people in the industry does not do that. They do not show y'all their real authentic self, whether it be goofy, sad, emotional, happy, whatever, right? Let's keep it going. I woke up and it was almost, you know, like when it's your birthday and you get, a hundred texts, a hundred calls, and it's like that. That's how my phone was today. And um, people just love pasa pasa. They love the gossip, you know what I'm saying? And um, people who don't know me, they'll be like, oh, Safari, you messy. But anyone who really does know me, they know, like, I don't like, I don't like that kind of attention. Um... <clears throat> Me expressing myself is, is, there's no clout involved. I'm, I'm not getting clout. Um, I'm not trying to set up a clickbait. You know, there's a situation at hand and I spoke about it. And really and truly, I, I don't like speaking about it. There are a lot of people and there's a lot of times I've been in a situation and things happen and people say, yo, why don't you ever say anything? Because I'm not that kind of a person. I don't thrive off of drama um, contrary to belief. I am, I feel like I'm happy, you know? I go through what I go through, you know, but I live in America and as a black man, we gotta just, Take it on the chin because there are, you know, I'm not saying everybody doesn't care, but there are some people who do care. And, you know, I know who's genuine. I know when it's coming from a genuine place. And, you know, me doing that video, that wasn't to bash anybody because I'm, I'm just not like that. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. It's just, Hey, look, it's A, B, it's black and white, and that's that. Um, like, I'm a, I'm a real man. I don't, I don't want to, like, I don't want to put my, 
business on Front Street. What you've seen on Love and Hip Hop for the past few years is, it's very, it's enhanced, you know? And it's entertainment, it's a show. And I'm talking about from 10 years ago to five years ago. It, it may look like, hey, this is what you're seeing, but at the end of the day, I'm on a camera and it's a job. But this right here, you know, like I said before, I'm not filming. This is real life. And <clears throat> I don't want to go tit for tat. I don't want to try to embarrass anybody. I want to just be at a place where when it's time for me to see my kids or us come up with some sort of a schedule, that this schedule is set in place. Um, nobody wants to create life and bring it into this world. And it's bad enough this world already is screwed up enough as it is. Nobody wants to create life, bring it into this messed up world, and then just have more things going on that shouldn't be going on that could be avoided, you know? Um, I want to be able to do everything that I don't remember my father doing for me when it comes to being a parent. It's a lot. And not even man or woman, this is about being in a position where you have a lot of eyes on you. And when you have to live your life in front of, you know, millions of people and some people think they know you and they want to think that they could assess your situation more than you, it does suck. A lot of people who are around me daily, they're like, yo, you are so strong. I don't know how you deal with it. And today is one of those days where I haven't been on my phone. And just to protect my mental health, um, it, it's, it's best for me to be that way. There's times where I've took six months off of social media and had somebody else running my page just because I don't, I don't need to see everything going on. I don't want to know everything going on. If it's not my business, why do I need to know? And especially like being black and in the black culture, um, I just feel like uh, a lot of us are just so caught up in gossip and drama. And me personally, I don't live my life like that. I don't like, I don't like drama. I don't like seeing fighting. I don't want to be involved in it. You know, I want to just live my life in peace, be a father in peace, and be able to co-parent in peace. And I just want to say, you know, I appreciate everybody who reached out to me. And I just, I want me and my kid's mother like, I, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart. I want me and my children's mother to, like, we don't have to be, it, it doesn't have to be anything. I just want us to be able to set up A, B, C, and done, and that's it. You know, with a, a lot of things that, you know, I spoke about, people want to make their own assumptions, and there's some people who understand, some people who don't understand, some people who agree, some people who don't disagree. And I'm not here to explain myself to people over and over and over. I used to do that, and it's very draining, it's very stressful. My mother, she's still alive, and I'm grateful for that. I speak to people who who like say, hey, be grateful that you can call your mom. I remember talking to one of my friends whose mom isn't here and it's, just, just the thought of not being able to have 
certain people that you care about in your life, it is, that's my biggest fear. I don't care about nothing else. Like, a lot of people say life is short, but I don't think they're really, like, grasping what that means. I'm in a court battle. I don't want to be in a court battle. I don't want to pay for lawyers. Paying for lawyers, paying them thousands of dollars when I could be using that money towards something for my kids, for something that matters. That's what I rather. I don't want to pay for lawyers. Like, it's, it's so unfair. It is so unjust because at the end of the day, somebody, he called me and he said to me, he said, Safari, let me tell you something about all of this legal and all of this lawyer jargon. Nobody wins but the lawyers. I had a lawyer when I was in Atlanta. She was horrible. All she wanted was to take pictures and, and, and show that I was there. It's like she was more caught up in the social media aspect and leaking information that things were being filed as opposed to, hey, let's handle what needs to be handled. There were certain things that I asked for and wanted that didn't get handled. And it's like, this lawyer, she got her money. And they lived their life while I have to still live my life. So I don't want to deal with no lawyers. It's really, really unfair. And I don't... I don't want when my kids get older that they look back and they see all of this and be upset at me. I don't want them to be upset at their mother. I just want peace. It's bad enough I got to deal with all of this shit in the public eye. I want peace. I want mental clarity. I want everyone's mental health to be good. And I just want to be a father and a good person. I want to be able to get to a point that when my kids have something to do, I can talk to their mother and we know, hey, this is coming up for the kids and there's no issues. This shit is so, it's just so heavy. And I see a lot of people, they say, why are you talking to the internet? Go to the courts. Some people are just so ignorant. The court system doesn't work in one day. The court system doesn't work in one week when you're transferring a court case from Georgia to Florida. I don't even want to have to transfer a court case. I want to be able to have peace with my children's mother and say, hey, this is this, this is that. I have this, you have that, and that's it. I don't need no pat on the backs from nobody. I don't need no sympathy from nobody. I don't need, like, I just want I just want peace.